Yo, what is going on guys? It is Chris and today I am going to be doing my updated slash all-encompassing review of the Skeff Vantage. Now, if you guys didn't watch my previous video where I basically compare the Skeff Vantage to the Skeff Impact when I originally got the Skeff Vantage, I'm going to summarize the features of the Skeff Vantage as quickly as possible. So the two main differences between the or the main differences between Scuff Impact and Scuff Vantage are the way that the paddles are designed. There's still four paddles, but they're shaped slightly different compared to the Impact. They also have these two side access buttons, which basically increases your uh, programmable buttons to six as opposed to four on the Vantage or on the Impact. I still keep calling the Vantage the Impact and vice versa. Anyway, so thumbstick layout the uh the vantage mimics the xbox this is uh thumbstick layout so it's asymmetrical and also the faceplate is removable right here there you go it uses magnets and it's removable you can change the faceplate out today i should be getting my faceplate that i ordered with the vantage but it was delayed and thumbsticks are removable the d-pad also removable and the remote packs also removable and there you go you can remove those if you don't want to keep them i like to keep them because i like the weight of a controller that has the remote packs but i might experiment with not using those now that some of the other issues have been fixed what issues were fixed with this advantage primary issue the dead zone in the thumbsticks there were were a few controllers that shipped and by a few I mean I think like the second shipment of people that pre-ordered their controllers and some of the ones that were in the stores uh, shipped with uh, dead zones that were slightly higher than they should be doesn't mean that there are no dead zones it just means that they were after the update that scuff did the dead zones were decreased to a point where it actually makes sense now so it feels more similar to the DualShock 4 and by proxy the Scuff Impact. So I actually have some footage comparing the Scuff Impact and the Vantage in gameplay. Alright, so what you guys are going to be watching is me basically playing with uh, bots in Black Ops 4 and I'm going to be using the Scuff Impact um, in wireless mode and then I'll be switching between the Vantage in wireless mode and wired mode. The reason why I didn't decide to use wired mode for the impact is because I really felt that the performance of the impact in wire wireless mode is probably the best out of all the controllers mainly because it is a DualShock 4 controller and the DualShock 4 controllers pretty much perform identical in wireless mode as I do in wired mode. Now the Scuff Vantage on the other hand um, there's a little bit more of a delay in wire or wireless mode as opposed to wired mode, so I decided Plus that I would try it out in wireless mode just to see how I feel about using it One and then up. switch off to wired mode and then sort of just Recon, basically KIA. determine how I felt about it. Kill. What I can say about the uh, impact is there's really much not there's really not much to say about it really. Um, the the sticks perform the way that a regular DualShock 4 Smoke controller would, so if you have experience with a DualShock 4 controller, then there's a good chance that the Scuff Impact should feel basically identical. The Scuff Vantage, as we know, is a third-party controller. is isn't built off of the same hardware as a DualShock 4 controller, but what I will say uh, is that the Scuff Vantage pretty much, if I haven't, if I, if this is the only controller that I use, um, I would say this is pretty good, and it might be uh, the closest third-party controller to a regular DualShock 4, especially when it's in wired mode. When it's in wired mode, there's basically no delay, and by no delay, I mean it's like, it's pretty much identical to the DualShock 4. When it's in wireless mode, there is a bit more delay. I think Scuff said it was about, like, two milliseconds of a delay or something like that in wireless mode Firebreak which is kill. still not bad it's still not as tight as the wired mode but what i will say is that it does feel 
Um, it does feel usable. I've used controllers, and I'll actually talk about this in my third comparison video. But I've used controllers for PS4 in wireless mode that just feel completely unusable. Like the delay feels like if I wanted to use this in wireless mode, it just wouldn't work, especially for like a first person shooter. In other games, you might be able to get away with it, but when playing a first person shooter, if I just want to play this casually and I don't really want to go super try hard like tournament mode, then playing in wireless mode is basically the way that I play. So it's good to know that the Vantage, even though there's a little bit more delay, just slightly by a millisecond, like it's still pretty much usable for like casual gameplay. So that's really all I have to say about this. So we'll get back to my conclusion. All right, so as you guys just saw, the Scout Vantage now with the updated firmware, um, it basically performs as I would have expected from the controller had it not had the issues that it originally shipped with. And if I had to really say anything about that, it's that it kind of sucks that the controllers that basically shipped a little bit later than the other controllers, the initial controllers that basically got sent out to like the review and the sponsored persons by Scuff. Um, it really sucks that those had the issues with like the dead zones and some of the connectivity issues and the controller for getting like your remapping options, things like that. It kind of sucks that that happened because right now, as it stands, I really like using the Scavantage. Um, I kind of said it in my video where once they fix all of the issues with the controller, I see this as my primary uh, PS4 controller. And once it comes with PC drivers, I'll most likely be using this on PC as well. But it really sucks that they didn't really, or ba basically that the issues that they were having sort of created some backlash with the controller. Like, I'm pretty sure once I post this video that there's people gonna be in the comments that are still going to be like on the fence with Scuff and they're basically not even going to like reconsider the Scuff Vantage even though the problems that I had with the controller and the problems that many other people have had with the controller are basically non-existent anymore. So, conclusion, because I really wanna keep this short and sweet, um, if you guys wanted a Scavantage, you're waiting until they fix the issues that they were having with it. I would say now is a good time to go ahead and get this controller. Um, again, this is something, this is a pro controller. If this is something that you want, you want a pro controller. I see no issue with going with the Scavantage. Um, and that's really all I have to say. Like, Scuff did what I wanted them to do, which was fix the issues with the controller. So I really don't have much else to say. Um, the next video is probably going to be the last video that I do about pro controllers for like a long time, especially for the PS4 pro controllers, is where I'm going to be doing my all like comparison review between the Vantage, the Razer Raiju Ultimate, and the Scuff impact and that's basically where i will be saying like if i only had one of these controllers which one would i pick and yeah so look out for that and i hope you guys found this video informative um i really didn't have much else to say other than the vantage works like i would want it to so um i have no problem recommending that controller so hope you guys enjoyed this video and feel free to leave a like, comment down below, anything else. As always, this is Chris, and I'll see you later.